All right, guys, welcome back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's let's talk about building your list and launching your product. And this is this is a big this is a big module because a lot of things have led up to this point. You know, you you started off not even knowing what you wanted to do, and then over the course of the of the um, the modules, you came up with a good idea, and you thought about your customer, and you developed your product idea, and you, you set up some web pages, and and you know you you created your product. Now you get to the point where you know um, you need to build your list of people who want to buy your product, and then and then launch your product. And some of these things will happen simultaneously. I mean, you might not be done creating your product by the time that you're done creating your list, and you're never really done creating your list. It just it happens kind of simultaneously. But let's talk about. The, um, let's review the big picture again, and it was a five-step process. It was a, or five main pieces of the framework, right? So, one is coming up with ideas. Two is thinking about product types, which we thought about already. Three is getting your web pages up, and four and five are building your list, uh, launching the product, and selling it. And this is what we're going to be talking about in this module: building the list, launching the product, and selling it. And of course, your list is your group of people who have opted into your website. And this is a pretty, it's a very important part of your of your business, you know, online because you need to have a list of people who have consented for you to contact them directly about what you want to do. Um, that's important. That's kind of, you know, no matter what you do or where you go, your list is something that you know you can take with you and you can still make money off of that. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about building your list. There's different ways to build your list, um, and there's going to be a lot of stuff going on here. Um, but I want you to remember that the process can be somewhat simultaneous for all this stuff, especially when it's your first product, your first launch. You're going to be building your list um, at the same time as you're launching for the most part, at the same time as you're selling for the most part, at least for your first product. You know, it's, it's kind of all, it, it kind of all comes to, to, to a head at one point. But let's talk about building the list. So there are a couple different ways to do that, a lot of different ways actually. Um, the first way is through content marketing. Uh, so what's content marketing? Content marketing is writing articles. So let me give you an example. We'll go to, oh, we'll go to, um, I'm going to show you some different examples of my content marketing. All right, so of course I have my blog and we know about the blog. Um, you should have a blog up by now, and this is your first piece of content marketing, right? This is you talking about um, your your worldview and also establishing yourself as an expert. And your blog is great, um, but at first, as you still build credibility, uh, it's not going to be the most popular source of traffic for you because people don't know you. So your blog is great as a home page and as a base to talk about your content, but it's harder at first to get your message out there via the blog because people are still learning about you. So you have to start leveraging your content. And the best way to do that is to write for other people. So a couple sites here, like I write for Huffington Post. Um, so you can see here that this is my content that I've written. And um, it's the same stuff, it's some of the same stuff that I have on my website, but it's just packaged for Huffington Post. And you can see what people can click on me. Now they have links back to my site, my rich20something.com, my danielibiaz.com. They have links back to me so that they can find me again. And this is all coming back to creating content, putting it out there, and having people find you. And then also, I have other, other articles on places like Under 30 CEO. Um, and you see at the end, I put a little, um, a little caption, Dan Lee Piazza is an author editor, or author coach like enthusiasts, rich 20 something, danleepiazza.com. So you can see that not, I even give people access to email me. So this helps draw traffic to my blogs. And you can see, um, this has been tweeted 106 times. It's been liked 49 times. So people are reading this, and there's people have emailed it to them to themselves 21 times. You know, so you can see now that people are are responding to this. Um, let me see. So the whole key is, and I'm going to. Uh, I'm also on Epic Launch. I don't know. Here's uh, here's Epic Launch. Uh, this is another article. Let's see if anybody left any comments. No comments on this one yet. But see, so you know now, you can see four different sites where I have my opinion, my voice, and my ideas up there. And that's important because the more places you are, the more places you can um, you can get your message out there. Because you can't assume that everyone's going to see. Um, you can't assume that everyone's going to see your article one place or that you've written about it once so that people are going to see it there and, you know, um, 
and, uh, and, and pick up on it. You have to be able to spread your content in multiple places, right? So um, and I'll actually, I want to show you, this is, um, and I'm going to review this more in the, uh, in the, the bonus section modules about net or networking and connections and marketing. But this is an example of an Excel spreadsheet that I have that keeps track of all my content marketing. It's really basic. It's nothing, uh, it's nothing special. Um, and so you can see now, this, so these are the articles, these are the sites that I'm posting on. Right now I'm on Huffington Post, Under 30 CEO, Epic Launch, Seamus Bloggers, all those. These are the places that I'm already on that I tell you, that I just described to myself, uh, whether I have any articles that are getting ready to be put up or if I don't have any at all. Then these are the ones I'm waiting to hear back from, and then these are the ones I still have to contact or still have to do some sort of action for. And these are the ones, these are my, my high-level prospects that I still want to get on Forbes, Fast Company, Inc., Wall Street Journal, Fortune, all those, and I'm still working on getting into those. And the way that I get into them is I literally just go, like, um, like, let's say I were to go to Epic Launch and I want to contribute, I just go to contact. And I would just write to them and be like, hey, um, I'm working on some articles or I've written such and such so far. Are you guys looking for content like this? I would look to see what type of content they have on the website, see if there's anything I can contribute and, and inquire about contributing. It's the same thing on, uh, the same thing on like, uh, yeah, on, look at Under 30 CEO. There's actually a contribute button. So it's not really hard to get into these websites. You just have to look. And it gives you all the outlines for guests, for guests contributing. Um, and then it gives you the, uh, the address of the person to email to. And boom, you're in. You know, all you have to do is write some good content. And a great, way to, great place to start is with your own blog. So that way, when they ask you for examples of your work, you can give them a link back to your own blog so they can see it published at least somewhere so they have a good example of what your work looks like. Send them a link to that. Show them some good content you've written. And boom, you're already in. So... Um, so it's, it's not too hard to contribute. So I would make a list of places in your niche where you can contribute and start trying to contribute to those places. That's content marketing. That's getting your voice out there. The other way is social media. So social media is pretty, you know, pretty obvious. Um, I, I was very, very hesitant to get on Twitter because I just, I didn't feel like I needed one more, one more thing in my life. I just didn't, I just didn't need it. Um, but now I'm finding that it's actually pretty important. Um, and so now all my Facebook and my Twitter and my YouTube are, um, oh, did he respond to me? Uh, no, that was just me responding to him. Um, all, all my, all my kind of social medias are, are, um, integrated and I'll add this, um, and I'm not sure if I added this anywhere else and I might end up adding this. I think I might've add, added this in my, um, like my small social media, uh, module. And so I'll break down more of that there, but you want it to be, um, you want it to be uh, niche. You want the social media to be niche specific. So, for instance, like um, for for basic stuff, you know, I think the three social media networks you need to be on: are Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And remember, YouTube is a social media network. Um, but if you have a different product that maybe caters to a certain group of people, like maybe uh, young women, uh, uh, Pinterest and Instagram would be good, you know, because a lot of young women are on there. So you have to think about your market, think about where they're at and target those areas of social media. But start getting on there and start posting. Um, just start posting immediately, you know, and uh, have a good mix of your content. But we'll talk about more social media and social media module. There's also SEO. Um, I'm definitely not an SEO expert. I don't really understand it. Uh, I understand the basics of it, but I know that the Google has algorithms that are always changing. You know, um, like I said, I've been banned from the Google ad network for a while now. I, I can reinstate it. I just have to, you know, work on some stuff. But they just didn't like my, they didn't like the website that my, I guess my ad redirected to because it redirected to a splash page or, you know, the landing page of Rich 20 something. They wanted a content page. They wanted a blog. But blogs don't really convert that well, so I wanted to redirect to a, a landing page. They didn't like that, so they kicked me off. But, you know, I don't really pretend to be a social media ex or a social um or a search engine optimization expert. I just, I'm not an expert on that. Um, but I do know this. I do, knew, I do know that to get ranked highest, um, you have to have a lot of content out there, kind of like having the most books in the bookstore. So a lot of that will go back to content marketing. And I do know that you need to have quality content that people keep reading, referring to, sharing, and posting backlinks to. So the more you content market and the more you social media, uh, your SEO will go up. And there are tricks and tips to do that. Um, you know, for to, to rank for your target keywords, but you know, to be honest with you, I'm not an expert in social media, and I'm still learning that. 
Um, but I do know that there are a lot of people who aren't experts in social media who also have great, um, who also have great uh, information product businesses because people know how to find them. Um, so like for instance, if I were to type in, I don't know, like what does Brendan Burchard do? Because Brendan Burchard, he's, he's doing like 10 and $20 million a year, you know, supposedly, uh, according to him, uh, with his different products. And if I were to type in, um, become an expert, because he taught, he teaches, uh, basically expert positioning. So become an expert. You think that would be a, something he was looking for, you know? Um, and yeah, he doesn't rank experts. Academy doesn't rank. Um, and you'd think it would, you think, you think it would rank for something like that. I mean, it's not even on the first page. So, you know, search engine optimization is not everything. Even Ramit Sethi, um, author of, I, I will teach you to be rich. He's always like, I don't understand SEO. I don't understand SEO. I don't know how it works. You know, I just do my thing. And I think that's, that's important. Just put up content that's important to you, have engaged audiences, be on social media and just do your thing. And people will find you. Um, there are also some, some advanced networking secrets, which are, I'm actually very happy that you're part of this program because there are some things that I've learned along the way that have really skyrocketed my progress. I, I'm not even going to cover them in the, in the building the list um, portion of this product, um, but they're important. And you'll, so check them out in the bonus section. Uh, I wanted to also add something to this. So yeah, to build your list, um, you need good content. Uh, marketing, so lots of articles out there. You need good social media. You need good SEO. But there are another thing that I didn't I didn't add on here. Um, you can get on the um, and this is all comes back to the squeeze. But I guess I'll, I'll rearrange this in it. You can also do forums. You can also go on the forums. So like for instance, um, you know if you're into health, you could go to uh, you could go to um, you know SparkPeople.com. They have great forums, and you could start posting on there, and eventually people will um, trust you in that community and you know you just want to contribute and um, eventually you know there will be a good place for you to tell people about what you're working on you know um, if you're into you know um, if you're in maybe if you have like an athletic type of niche or like a cooking type of niche or a, like a sewing type of niche or a, you know some sort of medical based niche find the different forums where people are like people are talking about that type of stuff and go on there and become a member of that community that's important um, so, so yeah, so there's also forums. Uh, what else are there? There's uh, content marketing, social media, SEO, forums. Um, well, and then there's some advanced stuff. So I guess we'll cover that later. So let's talk about, so once you, so as you build your list, it's all coming back to the squeeze, right? It's all about, it's all about coming back to the, can I bring your edges here? Maybe I can bring this one up. Yeah. It's all about coming back to the squeeze. So, there are a couple of different things you can do, um, and I'll, I'll put it. Let me let me actually elaborate on this way. So you can do the blog. You can convert on the blog, or you can convert on the, um, or you can convert on the um, the landing page. So, you know, again, just to just to revisit. Um, and right now, my webinar um, landing page is up, so you'll see that again. Let me see. So if you go to rich 20 com. This is the landing page for richmondsummit.com, and I'll pause the video, so I'll spare you the details. Um, but this is a landing page, of course, but you also have, you know, you also have the blog page, and the whole point is, whenever you put your content out there, whenever you put your social media out there, whenever you, um, whenever you, whenever your name is out here, you want them to come back to one of these sources so that they can enter their name in there, they can enter their email in there, and you can have that information so that you can talk to them later. Same thing with the squeeze page here. You want to... Get their name and email on here so that you can contact them later. It's all about coming back to the squeeze page. Or all about coming back to the same. You know, squeeze page sounds kind of like uh, evil. I don't like that. It's all about coming back to the squeeze page. So all of these strategies, content marketing, social media, SEO, some of that advanced networking stuff, and the forums, all comes back to the squeeze, getting their, getting their information and building your list. That's how you build your list. It, you know, you, you'd, I, I wish there was a more advanced... Um, way to tell you how to do this. I wish there was like a secret method or something. There's just not. I'm sorry. It just, you know, it takes a little bit of time and you just, you, it's contingent on you making great content and then that's kind of it, you know, um, and you'll build it over time. So just keep making great content. So let's talk about launching. So there are, um, there are two types of launches, essentially. Well, and I, I guess there's, you know, there's, there's kind of three, but essentially two types of launches. 
Um, there's the time launch and the automatic or evergreen launch. So time launch is basically, um, the time launch is actually, if you're purchasing this um, after seeing a webinar, that's an example of a, um, that's an example of a time, of a timed launch. So time launch is basically, um, basically it's, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a launch that you pick a certain date for and come rain or shine, you launch the product on that date and you sell the product on that date. Um, you don't sell it in between. You don't, uh, you don't have it up on your, up on your main splash page or your blog to sell. You only sell that product on that date. And it helps to have a small list when you do this first so that you can have people who actually are available and want to buy the product perhaps. There's, there's that. It helps to have a small list. Um, and also can be better for JV partners to have a launch date. Well, I guess we should talk about that later. Maybe I could even move that um, down there because that's more important. But time launch is um, you have to set a date and stick to it. So basically, um, if you look at this splash page right here, this landing page, it says hosting a kick-ass free webinar that teaches you how to launch your online business called Startup from Scratch. It's going to be awesome. You should come. Class begins at 9 p.m. Eastern on January 23rd. So basically, I'm saying, hey, um, this is my the day I'm launching, and you should come check this out. You know, And then I will launch it on that day, and after that, um, it's not going to be, you're not going to be able to get it through the webinar because that's the webinar is going to be over, you know, but what it does is on a time launch, it helps you to build momentum because if the product is always available, it's a little bit harder to build momentum. It's a little bit harder to build like affiliate steam. We'll talk about affiliates in a minute, um, because there can be some anticipation of a launch day. Um, and I know it's kind of scary at first because you're like, man, if I set a launch day and I don't have anybody come, it's going to suck. Yeah, it will suck, you know, but that's the whole, the whole point of having a launch day so that you can build that anticipation. So work really hard through your different uh, social media channels to build um, to build that anticipation and then just launch it. And, you know, even if you have, you know, 10 people sign up, that's cool, you know. Um, so, yeah, so just so a time launch, you pick a day and you launch the product and you sell it then. We'll talk about how to sell it in a minute, uh, but that's just the overall view. And then the auto launch is the evergreen launch. So evergreen launch basically is you're always in launch mode. Um, so visitors get the prearranged um, content that leads to a sale. So let me give you an example of this, and I'll go into my back end here. Let me not. Uh, um, so I'll show you an example of. Okay, now this page isn't even up. This is like not. A, this is not even a, a working page on the site. But this is an example of what the standard landing page on richmyshumming.com would look like. And, um, and so basically what this is, is this is just the video with my intro. This is the old, this is the old video. Yeah, that's the old video. So this is, this is a standard um, video. This is my standard intro video. And this is the introduction to my uh, three-day free Rich 20 Jumpstart course. And so unlike the webinar, which is saying, hey, we have a live event going down, sign up for the live event. This is saying, hey, sign up for this, for this course. And once you sign up for this course, um, in the, in the, in the time launch, the value sequence that I give you is really just a webinar. It's a webinar. It's, I'm going to email you a couple times with some cool little reminders and factoids and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm going to, um, you know, and, and then I'm going to deliver the webinar and after that, there'll be the sale. But with the, with the, um, the evergreen launch, this thing is always up. It's always in launch mode. And I put the auto, I set the autoresponder to send you a series of emails. And in the series of emails, um, they have links to different videos, which is my free course. So you can look at session one. So the first session is you get this thing. This is the first, this is the first session. You see people share this. Um, oh, that was nice of Phil to say that. Um, and then you have, uh, then you have session, people can navigate session two. And then you have session three and you can do session four if you want. And then it goes all the way up to the sales page. So basically instead of me launching a webinar, um, and then directing you to the sales page, I, I launch you through the sequence of autoresponder videos that you watch. And then I launch you to the sales page. It's the same concept. 
but the only difference is I'm not orchestrating it live. It's happening on autoresponder. Um, and there, there are drawbacks and benefits to both, to both things, the time launch and the um, evergreen launch. The benefit of the time launch is that, again, you can build more momentum because it's, it's a pretty truthful, honest setup. You're like, hey, this launch is starting. Um, it is on January 23rd. You should come and check it out, and that's when we're launching. You know, um, and so it's good for building. It's good for building momentum and good for you know kind of drumming up some support. With the auto evergreen launch, um, if you have a product where you're not really going to do any webinars for that product anymore, or maybe you just don't want to take the initiative to um, drum up that that publicity on the front end, you can put yourself in auto um, auto launch mode, and you can um, you can basically just set it to where whenever someone comes to your website, they're cycled through the sales funnel, and then they land in the sales page, and then that's it, and they either buy or they don't. And so that's cool because it can, um, it can take a lot of the, the um, management out of your hands. Um, and so with the JV partners now, um, and we're gonna, we'll talk about, again, in the advanced networking uh, section, we'll talk about how to get them on board, but this, uh, this timed launch, I find is much better for the JV partners because you have to have a date for partners to be launching things for and from and to and it's just better when it's in the time launch mode. Um, and if you have optimized press, if you have optimized press, it's actually very, very easy to set this up. Let me see if I can log in for you. Right, so um, so yeah, so if you have optimized press, um, yeah, basically uh, it's not it's not too complicated. Um, you can go to the funnel configuration down here, and basically what you do is you just set your launch to either perpetual or timed. And then you set the amount of launch pages you have, whether it's you know, um, whether it's three value pieces or four value pieces. We talked about that, and then you just talk about you just then you just put where your entry page is, which is the squeeze page, and then you just kind of set it up this way, and then you can um, you can you know load where you redirect after someone signs up, and then what you do is you just go to pages and you create the pages for the launch page. And session one, session two, session three, you can see that. And then what you do is you just um, is you just uh, you just set these pages up so that on Aweber, um, every time someone gets a new email and you want to give them a new piece of the content, you just mail them this page, this session one, session two, session three page, and then eventually uh, it will lead you to the sales page. So you just integrate Aweber and um, Optimize Trust together, and you have a pretty slick looking uh, evergreen site. And if you wanted to do the the um, like the one-off launch where you just want to do a, a live launch like a webinar that's a little different because then you just set up a webinar I'm using go to webinar go to meeting go to webinar it's this site right here it's actually free for the first 30 days and um, it's pretty cool it's free for the first 30 days and um, and this is this allows you to um, to host live webinars so that's what I'm using for this so when someone signs up for um, for my splash page now uh, their information goes to go to webinar, and um, and then they're signed up for the go to webinar, and then when I launch it, then they'll get to see me live. So that's why that's what I did with the with the webinar uh, piece. Um, okay, so let's talk about let's talk about once you've built your list and you've decided how you want to launch it. Uh, let's talk about actually selling the product. And so you have a product now; you've been working on it for a while. And um, how do you? How do you determine how to price it, man? I mean, it's difficult. The one thing is, you know, you got to determine the aggregate value of the product. Um, so it's kind of like the combined value of all your efforts, right? Um, and it's great for marketing. So, like, let's say that you worked for something. Like, I worked on, I worked on this product basically. I mean, I the product didn't take four years to make, but the knowledge that it took for me to get to this point, for me to figure out how to do all this stuff, it took me a couple of years, and it took me at least three years closer to four years to figure out how to do all this stuff. And that's great because you can do little things like, well, let's see here. You know, um, it took me, uh, it took me, 
you know, four years, let me bring up a little, let me bring up a little text edit box here. Let me, right, actually, let me bring up a calculator. Let's see. It took me uh, four years, and there's uh, 12 months in a year, and each month, I think I spent, uh, let's say I spent 20 hours a month. Say I spent 20 hours a month uh, learning how to do this stuff, and that's about 960 hours. And let's say that you paid me minimum wage for those 960 hours just to research, um, learn, um, produce, and troubleshoot all this material. Well, that's $725. Let's say $725 is minimum wage. I don't know. It depends on where you're at. That's about $7,000. That's you know $6,960. That's about $7,000 of actual work. But I'm not, I don't expect you to pay for all my work. But it's great that you can see the aggregate value because if it took me four years, this is about a seven thousand dollar effort. That's almost ten. That's almost ten grand of effort I put into this. You know, and it, that's real. I mean, twenty hours is not. It's not unreasonable. I mean, that's you know three and four hours a day. You know, um, in my spare time, it's totally possible and doable. And of course, you've probably done things very very similar. Um, so, but after after you determine aggregate value and you realize you can't charge people. You can't charge people for all your work like that because they don't want to pay for every single hour you've done. The whole point of them buying your product is that they want to buy it for they want to they want to they want to bargain on your knowledge. They want to be able to get your knowledge very quickly without having to pay for every single thing that you had to learn. That's the whole point of selling an information product to eliminate some of that, you know, uh, that go between. So you got to determine the actual value. So think of what uh, would be a fair price. People can't possibly pay for all your years of experience, right? So, you know, if you estimate that it costs you between seven and ten thousand dollars to get all this information together, you know, you can charge them seven and ten if you want, and some people will buy. But um, that might not be the best way to go. Um, so you have to consider your market. Uh, so, what type of income does your market have? So, for me, you know, rich twenty-something. Um, actually, a lot of people who are over the twenties love the product and they bought it. Um, but if you want to target younger entrepreneurs, you can't assume that every entrepreneur has you know, um, a couple of grand to shell out on the drop of a hat for, for a video product, for, for an e-course. Now, for a seminar, it could be different. You know, it is different. Uh, for other more intensive things, it is different because you, you have to protect your time. But for an e-course, I wouldn't charge several grand, especially when I know that my market is going to be younger people who might not have that sitting in the bank. So you got to think of, um, you got to think of a price point that matches your experience or their experiences. So you got to settle on something that's fair for both parties. And here's what I've come up with. There's a couple different models. Um, I originally wanted to charge, um, you know, a thousand dollars for this product, and um, or I think even one point is off the two grand, and I went on to one grand. And I think even one grand is fair for the information that you're getting. It's a lot of stuff, um, but I just didn't see a lot of people having this type of money sitting around. So I, you know, I nixed that idea. Then I wanted to go down to, you know, maybe five hundred, um, and. And uh, and I thought that was kind of also fair, and they could do it in payment plans of you know hundred dollars five times. And I, but then I thought you know that's just a little bit too, that's a little bit too much. But then I decided that you know what I for this for this product that I'm making, and this is the first product that I've made for, for my first product. I'd rather have more people get this in their hands, say good things about it, spread the word, um, and purchase it, than I would have less people buy it for more expensive. So I, I, I battled between 99, $199, and $299, and I came up with, um, with $99. Um, and just because, just because I feel that, um, I feel that, it's, uh, I feel that it's, it's, a good, it's a good bargain for people who want to be able to learn this type of stuff. It allows more products to be sold, and it allows uh, me to generate a bigger following. And I can always make more products that cost more money and I can make, you know, more expensive products and, you know, it's fine. But if you think about it, if you have a, if you have a $99 product, you know, if you have a, let's say, you know, you grow a 10,000 person subscriber list this year. Is that 10,000 or is that 100? That's 100,000. Let's say you grow a um, 10,000 person subscriber list, right? And um, maybe you have, um, in a year, you have, I don't know, 5% of them that buy, 0 0.05, oops, so you have a, a 10,000 person subscriber list and maybe you have um, a 
five percent of your list buy that year. Not that many, right? That's not five percent. Is not a lot. That's very conservative, I think. Um, if you have a five percent, you know, conversion rate, people actually buy. You know, we're talking, um, we're talking, you know, times your ninety-nine dollar product. That's you know forty-nine thousand five hundred dollars. That's fifty grand just just off that product alone. You know, and you're not including the fact that. You know, now that you have these customers, customers that have already bought from you once are more likely to buy other products from you. You're not um, thinking about the fact that you can do seminars, not thinking about the fact that you can do ebooks. I mean, that's just 50 grand just from one product, you know, and there's plenty more things you can do. So I'm not saying lowball everything you have, and I'm saying, you know, there, this is just my thought on pricing strategy. You know, everyone has different opinions. Um, but, you know, and if you got 100 grand, if you got 100 people or, or 10% of your list to convert to customers, 10%. Uh, other people, then you'd have a hundred grand, and that's just off one product at a hundred bucks. So, uh, you know, um, there's no, there's no, there's no rule for pricing. Pricing is whatever is whatever um, you perceive it, the value of it to be. But I think that it for your first products before you've established the fact that you're a world changing expert, you should just consider um, you should consider pricing it at a at a place that's more affordable, depending on what it is. Uh, because people will be more prone to buy, and the more the more buyers you have, the more raving fans you have, um, the easier it is to get more customers next time. Your list will grow from that, and that's where the value's at. It's it's all about volume. You don't have to charge an arm and a leg for um, for to make a good income for yourself. So that's my thought on pricing. So to when you're actually selling the product, once you've kind of built your list and you figured out if you want to do a, an evergreen or a, or a timed launch. And if you're having trouble figuring out how to do the launch process, by the way, <laughs> to, to, I'm, and I'm, I'm not endorsing them at all. I'm not, because um, I, I don't make any money off that. But I'll, I'll just say from what I've experienced, just get an optimized press page. It's easier. Go to optimizepress.com, pay the $97. If you have trouble figuring out how to launch all this stuff, go to Optimize Press, buy the page, they have tutorials on their website that make it really freaking easy. Um, and then you won't have to worry about how do I launch this and how do I set it up. It will, they'll tell you how to do everything. Because that's, that's, that's out the side of the scope of this product a little bit because I want to give you the idea of how everything fits together, the big pieces. But in terms of like the little micro the little micro moves, little micromanagement of the websites, go somewhere that's already set up for you. Optimized Press is built so that you can easily make sales funnels and you can easily make the automated pages and that type of stuff or you can easily set up um, time to launch this. Just do that. It's easier. That's my advice on that. So once you've figured out how to build your list and you've launched it and you've, um, you've figured out how you want to price it, you know, and of course the pricing, you know, you can figure that out later. I didn't figure out a price until, until later. Uh, but then you got to think about the funnel and the sales page, right? So, and that's kind of what this, um, whether you're doing a timed launch or you're doing a, an evergreen launch, free content, you get free content and it always ends in the sales, sales page. So if you're doing an evergreen launch uh, or perpetual launch, then you have the free autoresponder videos, which are good quality lessons, and then they end in the sales page. If you do in a timed launch, you'll get people to sign up to your list, and then you'll um, and then you will uh, you'll launch maybe a webinar or a um, a series of, of videos that are live, or you'll give out a special report or whatever you want to do. But then eventually, you'll direct people to um, your sales page. That's how it works. So, what's on the sales page? What does it consist of? Um, it's actually not, and I'm going to do, and I'm, I'm going to do an entire module on this. So we're not going to get too much into that here because I want to kind of save some time to, to do the entire um, sales page module. But basically, it's it's pretty simple, and um, and uh, it's basically a modified opt-in. So what you would do, and I'll give you an example. Um, if you go to, uh, let me go back to Rich Twenty Something. I'm already logged in. Hope I'm already logged in. Yeah, I'm already logged in. So let me give you an example. And this is why this is why um, um, optimized press kicks ass. Because check this out. And I'm actually I'm working on my sales page uh, right now. I'm I'm redoing it. So I'll give you an example of optimized press here. Look at Optimized Press and look at how easy they make it to set up a sales page. So in Optimized Press, all you do is you, you click uh, View the Template Gallery. You can go to Sales Pages, and then it gives you different sales pages um, to choose from in terms of how you want it to look. So, I mean, it could just be the video with the Add to Cart button. 
it could just be the, you know, they could have a little side widget bar here. You could have a um, another type of opt-in form on the sales page, on the squeeze page. I'm not sure why you would do that. I'm not sure why you would do another another sales page, another another squeeze page on the on the sales page. But I, I guess I, I'm probably I'll sure I'm sure I'll learn later. Um, you could do um, this is looks like another video. Do they have any standard sales letters? Do they have any just letter ones? Do they do that anymore? These are all sales videos. Sometimes they have. And I guess what you might want to do is if you, um, they don't even have letters anymore. Um, this, even the sales letter, it's all this. I mean, there's text here. But you can even go to, if you wanted to go to launch pages, uh, these are all videos too. Maybe if you go to, yeah, if you go to um, squeeze page. They have all text squeeze pages. I've seen these before. So basically what you could do is you could do a sales page um, and you basically all you do is you'd say, okay, well this is squeeze three header and you're like, all right, well I want this thing. You know, so you would do the squeeze three header. You just go to here, you'd find it and you click on it and then it would create the whole page like that. And then you could do, basically you could do all text and then you, what you can do is you can insert, um, you can insert a sales page an add to cart button, link it to your shopping cart, boom, you're done. It's really it's that simple, you know. Um, I tend to like the sales video better. I think videos convert better, and I like talking, but that's just you know that's just me. Um, but yeah, so that's I mean, and we'll talk about the sales page more um, in the in the kind of the sales psychology module. Um, let's talk about tools for selling the product. So. Membership backend and shopping carts, um, and I guess I should probably flesh that out right there. Wish list for the membership backend for the shopping cart. There's a bunch of different choices. Um, I'm going with ClickBank. So, uh, wish list is a membership backend that allows you to create and lock your content so that people can't get to it and people can't steal it or or download it without your access to it or get it without paying for it. So let me just show you wishlist.com real fast. Wishlist is a, is a WordPress plugin. We talked about plugins a little bit earlier. They're not hard to use. Um, oh, let's see. It's probably wishlistplugin.com. Uh, wishlist. Uh, yeah, here it is. So this is what I would do. Again, I don't even consider myself a coding, a coding expert. You know, um, I just know that uh, I just know that I just know what works. So Wishlist is a membership site, membership um, uh, site, or membership membership software for your site, and basically it just allows you to have a login at the top where people can log in and um, and get your content after paying, only after paying. You can set up different levels, but it locks it up. It locks it up so that they can only look at it when they're on the site if they paid for it. This is like a two-minute video. We're not going to watch it here, um, but yeah, just oh lord. Right. So go to wishlist.com. I think that I think the app is like again, it's like ninety-seven bucks. But this is one of those things where I'm not going to again, I'm not endorsing because I'm not getting paid for them. But I'm just saying this is one of those things where you can figure out a way to do it yourself. But um, I would just go with the easiest route because I'm not a professional programmer here and I want to make this as easy as possible. Wishlist makes it easy. And if you have optimized press, um, if you have optimized press, it integrates seamlessly with Wishlist with the plugin so you can set up the membership site quick. Um, and, you know, it's like at that point, you've made a $200 investment because all this other stuff, I mean, let's, let's talk about like maybe buying domain names, hosting um, your wish list and your optimized press. Maybe if you want to buy another thing for your blog, like Headway, at the most right now you've made a four hundred dollar investment, and that is, that's not even all at once. It's just like over a couple of months that you've built up to this. So maybe you've made a four hundred dollar investment. Maybe it's taken you four months to get all this together. Maybe you've made a hundred dollar investment a month, which breaks down to what twenty five dollars a week. So you, you paid about twenty five dollars a week to get this full fledged business running and off the ground, and. Um, and you know you can make that back, and you know if you price your product at ninety-seven bucks, it's, you make that back in four sales, or you can price your product at four hundred bucks and make it back in one sale. Whatever you want to do, but it's totally worth it to have the easy, the easy factor of 
plugged into that. And with the wishlist software, again, I'm not even gonna go into like how to set it up, everything that you need to do, because they have two, like many tutorials on the website about how to do that, so it makes it really easy. Um, same thing with ClickBank. So ClickBank, there are a bunch of different shopping carts, man. There's, I mean, there's, oh geez, there's PayPal out there, there's Volusion, uh, there's Infusionsoft, there's one shopping cart, there's all these different shopping carts out there. Um, the reason why I picked ClickBank, and I'll show you ClickBank, and the ClickBank, man, ClickBank is it's a monster in and of itself. I mean, I, I don't even have time. I wouldn't even have the. I wouldn't even have the the time to go through everything that ClickBank can do. But here's ClickBank in a nutshell. ClickBank is an affiliate marketplace where you can sell um, your products, and other people can sell your products, or you can sell other people's products. Um, it's all information products, and they can sell them online. Um, so basically, ClickBank is kind of like it's kind of like an eBay, or I guess it's like maybe like an Amazon for affiliate products. And what you do is you'd you'd go and you'd look to find products that you want to sell to other people, and then you could sell them depending on. And there's different ranks, like it's called seller or product gravity, which shows how much the product has been selling if it's good, and um, you can sell other people's products and you make a commission off that. So you make like 50% of the commission. You or as a seller, you set the commission that people get. Um, or you can also put your product up in the marketplace so that other people can look at it and if they think it's good, they can sell it. And then the money goes back to you. And you don't even have to know these people. They just decide they want to sell your product. And when they make a sale, you get half the money and that's it. And the better you do, the more people want to sell your product, the more people you get selling your product. You know, you could have 300 sellers and even if they're only selling one product, a, you know, one product a day or one product a week, at the end of the day, if you have a $100 product, that's $50. It's just coming from nowhere. You know, and you, you can make a couple hundred dollars a day just off that. I'm not even doing that yet. I need to set that up. Uh, I'm, just, I'm working on that. Um, but ClickBank also has a completely integrated shopping cart system where, um, well, basically, you, um, you set up the shopping cart. You go and you set up an account with them. So basically, just go to ClickBank, go to, um, go to I'm sure they have a, yeah, go to sign up and sign up for ClickBank. And it's, it's a $49 charge, I think. It's a $49 like, setup fee. And basically, you'll be completely integrated with the shopping cart system. And so that way, um, not only can people purchase from you directly and you, their shopping cart will process it all, um, but they'll do a couple of cool things. The first thing they'll do is they'll take care of all the different like state taxes and because you, you don't want to like sell to a person in California and not pay state tax on that and then have to owe you know like the state of California money at the end of the year. You want to make sure it's all accounted for. The other thing they'll do is the I think the process Amex immediately, whereas a lot of times you have to sign up with Amex and clear yourself with Amex, so American Express is covered. But uh, the, the best thing about um, ClickBank is that it's, you're automatically set up for affiliate uh, programming and purchasing. So when an affiliate wants to sell your product, ClickBank takes care of it all. Um, all the affiliate would do is go on the affiliate marketplace, find your product, decide that they want to sell it, start selling it, and then as soon as they make a sale, ClickBank takes care of all the money, they take care of the transaction fees, they take care of the, um, the affiliate payment, they cut the affiliate a check. You never see that um, that check. You never have to, or you see the check. You see your portion of the check, but you never have to worry about paying the affiliate. You never have to worry about being on time. You never have to worry about how much percentage people are getting. ClickBank takes care of it all. Um, and I think their fees are a little higher up front than most shopping carts. Like instead of instead of um, like four percent, like a typical shopping cart, I think they take like eight or nine. But the good news is that when you have an affiliate those costs are shared with the affiliate, so it will knock itself back down to four. Um, so if you're just selling by yourself, it'll, it will take a little bit more off the top, but the benefits of getting a, um, an affiliate par par partner and having all that stuff completely taken care of completely outweighs, in my opinion, the other stuff. Um, and again, that's, you'll have to like go on ClickBank, check it out, look at the videos, decide if it's right for you, but there, and there, are, there are a couple different other shopping carts. Of course, there's PayPal, and like I said, in Infusionsoft, One Shopping Cart, Volusion. So check out and see which ones you like. There's oh, there's also um, Shopify, but that's more for like that's not really for, for information products. It's more for like physical products. But it can also work if you have a physical product. Um, again, I like the affiliate stuff. I like uh, I like ClickBank, so that's who I'm going with. Um, but feel free to check out other places. Uh, fulfillment. Um, depending on what you're selling, if you're selling an information product like this digital e-course, there really isn't much need for fulfillment because Wishlist will take care of all that. Wishlist will lock it up for you and let people access it. If you do have to send out like a DVD or a CD or a book, there's a couple different options um, that I like. There's um, 
there's disk.com, there is um, there is also um, Trepstar. I'll show you Trepstar. There's also Trepstar. Um, there's also Oops, let me add that to it. So Trepstar. Um, so there's a couple different places. I mean, you could just do a search for DVD fulfillment, DVD CD fulfillment, and this will help you to organize and sell out your CDs and DVDs on demand so that basically um, when you want to create a DVD, it only creates it when someone orders it. They fulfill it and they send it out. And you don't have to worry about selling anything or sending things out or anything like that. Um, and they'll, what they'll do is they'll ask you for a, like a CD cover or, or a booklet design or something like that. And um, you can go to a place, and I'll, I'll make a little subcategory here, for design. You can have someone design your cover and design your, um, your booklet at, uh, you can go to elance.com. Or you can go to um, odesk.com. Dot com, or you can go, this is my personal favorite right now, you can go to Fiverr.com, and everything on Fiverr is $5. And they have really good designers and coders and entrepreneurs on there helping each other out for like $5. It's really, it's really awesome, and the quality is just as good. Um, so these are sites where freelancers go to do online work. So if you need someone to design your, um, maybe your graphics or your website or um, your booklet for your CD or whatever, just go to one of these websites, have someone do it, and then just send it over to the fulfillment center that you pick, like Trepstar or disc.com. They'll put the two together. They'll create your DVD or your CD for on-demand stuff. And when someone buys from you, you just link them to your shopping cart uh, using Optimized Press and Wishlist, or not Wishlist, Optimized Press and whatever your shopping cart is. And um, and they will, and actually, actually with Trepstar, you'll redirect to their website to buy if you... Um, if you like to, if you if you have a fulfillment center, um, but uh, but then they'll fulfill it, send you your money, and you won't have to deal with it. So it's pretty pretty sweet. Um, and then last but not least, customer service. Uh, if you come to a point where you need customer service, and you know I don't think you will for a while, but it's important to have it uh, when you have a pretty um, when you have a pretty uh, like involved product. After a while, I'd say probably in probably until you hit the, like the million dollar mark, I think you can handle a lot of a lot of it by yourself because a lot of it's so automated. You know, you have um, uh, you have uh, you know these these funnel systems, and you have like the autoresponder, and you have all these tools to help you. You have like the Evergreen Launch. You have all these tools to help you manage the workload. But you can always go to one of these sites like Elance or Odesk, or probably even Fiverr.com. Maybe not Fiverr because it's all work for five dollars. But the Odesk and the Elance.com, you can find someone who wants to handle your customer service on an intermittent basis, so you don't have to deal with it as much. But it's important to have good customer service as your product starts picking up. But now you can see how when you build a list and you decide how you, how you want to launch it, how that can kind of link into selling it. Um, and basically, you just decide how you want to sell it, and then you go do it. And it's you know there are things you're going to have to learn along the way. And I'll continue to update uh, this product, and so you guys can always check back in to get more material as I find uh, what things more people need. Um, and you can always ask questions uh, of me. But um, but these are the basics. So you know, before you start looking at this and saying, oh, it's too much, just start the process. Start by building your list, um, start by launching it. And, uh, and you know, you're going to be, you're going to be fine.